Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 playing a bit of domination here on the map Nuketown. Right around here with the Elkar 9 pistol and I'm having a lot of fun with this weapon over the past couple of days. I have a lot of things I actually want to talk about with the Elkar 9 which is going to be the main focal point of this video. But I actually have a triad of topics that I would like to discuss here in this video. Number one is going to be the 10 specialist which has apparently been leaked here in Black Ops 3. Definitely have a couple things I want to say about that. Number two I want to talk about the Elkar 9 here because again I'm having a lot of fun with this gun over the past couple of days. I know I'm the slowest person in the world getting dark matter and it's really because I'm not trying for it that much, but over the past couple of days, especially with Nuketown and Double XP and whatnot, I'm thinking to myself, this is a great time to finish up those pistols, so I finished up the other two, and now I just have the Elkar 9 to go through, and I've been really enjoying it. As well as I would like to discuss the idea of party modes potentially coming to Black Ops 3 in the near future, I asked you guys on Twitter, what things would you guys specifically like me to talk about today? Because why wouldn't I talk about the Elkar 9? I don't think I have like 11 minutes worth of Elkar 9 opinions or anything like that. So like, do you guys have anything else in particular you guys want me to talk about? Because I'm always open to fan suggestions, of course. And specifically, you guys wanted me to talk about the Blackjack 10 Specialist, as well as you guys wanted me to talk about the idea of party game mode potentially coming to Black Ops 3 in the near future. Even though I have talked about it in the past, again, I feel as though it's going to be something that would be very good for the COD community as a whole, so I definitely want to touch on that towards the end of the video. First things first, let's talk about the 10 Specialist. Maybe some of you guys are unaware, maybe some of you guys haven't heard about this potential leak. So there's another YouTuber out there who goes by the name of T. Martin. He's one of those popular Call of Duty YouTubers. I don't personally watch him because I don't personally watch any other Call of Duty channels. The only other Call of Duty channel I watch for like actual commentary and actual content I suppose would be Drifter for the most part because his videos are just very nice and informative and I watch of course a bunch of montage guys like JQ and stuff like that but uh, for the most part I don't watch other Call of Duty commentators because I never want to be accused of copying other YouTubers for whatever reason right I've actually had some people compare me to Merc Music who I don't even know who that is like I googled him of course and I, I looked at his channel and whatnot and I don't think my videos are anywhere near similar to his whatsoever but sometimes like I'll make a commentary topic they're like hey Merc Music made a video about this and it's like I don't watch his videos, man. I don't watch anybody's videos. Again, the only people I watch like Drifter and some montage guys. Like, that's it. But uh, there's another Call of Duty YouTuber by the name of T. Martin. This video was brought to my attention via the Black Ops 3 subreddit, where apparently his friend has leaked, I suppose, the 10th specialist in Black Ops 3. It's going to be a specialist by the name of Blackjack. And all I know about him so far, just from that video, is the specialist's ability is going to be he steals other specialist abilities, which is so boring, right? Like, how does that even work? Like, there's just a million, like, kinks in there. Like, how exactly does that work? Can he just steal it when Ever. Like, does he steal a specialist ability from the most recent person that he kills, and then once the thing fills up, then he can use it? Or, like, how does that work? Does it have to, does the opponent's specialist ability have to be fully charged before he can steal it? Like, I don't know, right? But that apparently is going to be the specialist ability. I don't know too much about the specialist weapon. But essentially, how it went down, to kind of summarize it, his friend, who already knew this, because apparently that stuff is in the game files, he called up Activision Support, said he accidentally got the 10th specialist blackjack, and they asked him some questions about it, and he's like, oh yeah, this is the specialist ability, this is how it works, and whatnot, and they're like, oh, really? Well, how would you end up getting this? And he said oh I got it from supply drops now keep in mind he's just completely BSing right he just he, he knows about this from the game code what the specialist abilities are going to be and he's just completely BSing them and then they basically confirmed to him that yes that's how they're going to be getting this specialist is via supply drops and of course people are very upset about that the idea that 10 specialists come to supply drops rather than just being purchasable or earnable in game now I will say going back to what I just originally pointed out it's a horrible specialist ability. Like, it sounds like a very gimmicky specialist ability. Like, oh, my ability is I can take other people's abilities. And when he says take, it means copy, pretty much. I don't think you're actually going to steal their specialist ability. Although you might. I mean, if you do actually take it from them, like, let's say somebody has gravity spikes available. You take that from them. No longer can they use it, but you can now use it. That would make it kind of interesting. But the way I picture it is it just, you know, you somehow can copy their specialist ability. So instead of using one specific specialist ability, you can now use, like, all of them in one game. It just it'll maybe swap in and out. Who knows? It's a very underwhelming special ability, in my opinion, based upon what I know about it, which, again, is not a lot. But I will say that is no excuse. A completely underwhelming special ability is no excuse to lock it behind supply drops. Now, I hope this isn't true. I mean, people want to know my honest opinion on it. It's like... What else can I say? I hope it's not true, because that's just... I, they've done it the entirety of Black Ops 3. They keep putting really cool weapons behind supply drops. Now they're going to be putting a specialist behind supply drops, which we all thought it was going to happen eventually anyway. But still, it's just... It's a... Pardon the French, but it's a really shitty practice. And, of course, I'd be against it. I've been against the idea of putting in exclusive content behind supply drops for a very long time. Cosmetic stuff, fine. But if you're putting in actual weapons, you're putting in specialists, what's next? Score streaks? Like, what? don't do this, Treyarch. Just make it public somehow. It, I don't know. I, I hope the leak turns out to not necessarily be true. Like, the, the Blackjack Specialist, sure, that can be true for all I care, but just hopefully it doesn't actually have to come from Supply Drops. That's the thing, right? I don't want it to come from Supply Drops. 
Next up, I want to talk about is DL Car 9, right? DL Car 9, I've been having a lot of fun with this thing the past couple of days, and I'm going to call this thing the Scorpion Reincarnate, right? So there's a lot of Scorpions in Call of Duty. There was one in Modern Warfare 3, there was one in Call of Duty 4, there was one in the original Black Ops. There's just been a bunch of Scorpions in Call of Duty history. So what Scorpion specifically would I say DL Car 9 reminds me of? I would say it's really close to all of them, to be perfectly honest. It has the same kind of a feel, but it mainly feels in my head like the Modern Warfare 3 machine pistol rendition. So you have about the same damage, right? I looked up the stats on this stuff, right? So the Elkar 9 versus the Modern Warfare 3 Scorpion, they both do 30 damage up close. They both do about 20 damage at a long range. They have the same magazine size at 20. The Scorpion, however, did have a faster fire rate, and I was kind of like the thing of it was it had a tiny magazine, but it had, you know, really good damage for the most part. I mean, 30 damage is not bad for... The Scorpion had like 800, almost 900 rounds per minute. Like, it was absurd. Like, it was a very fast machine pistol. It had really no recoil. The Elkar 9 is a bit different in that sense. It does have, of course, more recoil than the Scorpion in my memory anyway. It's been a long time since I used, like, the Modern Warfare 3 Scorpion. But it was, like, my favorite secondary in that game. Who remembers the Kimbo Scorpions? Right? Who remembers the Kimbo Scorpions? Yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. That was so much fun using that back in Modern Warfare 3. That was, like, my secondary of choice in that game. But the single Scorpion, it did kick quite a bit, and it did have a pretty fast fire rate and whatnot. And it just, it was a pretty good machine pistol, all things considered, but just, I feel as though the Elkar 9 is just so much better at using this thing. I feel as though it's a mini submachine gun, which is what the Scorpion all machine pistols are meant to feel like, I suppose. But this thing just really feels like a weak SMG that's... Uh, it's somewhere in the middle. It's in the middle between pistol and submachine gun. I've been having a lot of fun using it. Of course, I'm using it here on Nuketown because if you're going to be trying to get headshots with a pistol, in my opinion, I'm perfectly okay with taking that to Nuketown and trying to have some fun that way. And uh, Nuketown, of course, is free now. So if you guys haven't been playing on Nuketown, especially during these double XP events, which we seem to have every other week, I definitely recommend you guys start doing that because there's lots of XP to have, lots of kills to get. And if you're looking to complete challenges for some of the more obscure weapons, stuff that would maybe take a little bit longer if you're playing like you know, traditional game modes like Team Deathmatch, Kill Confirm, Domination, then you should definitely go to Nuketown because you can get a lot more kills that way. When using the Elkar 9, I find that these two attachments in particular, with at least this one perk, makes this a very fun weapon to use that can actually compete, not greatly, but with a lot of other submachine guns or submachine gun style weapons in the game, I suppose. I don't want to say other SMGs because the Elkar is not an SMG, although it kind of feels like a mini one. High caliber and fast mags, right? Some people will recommend to you and swear up and down about the idea of extended mags on the Elkar 9. Now, I will say that the Elkar 9 with extended mags is pretty good. I think it raises the magazine size by only like 8 bullets, which is, you know, that's not that bad. That's, you know, almost raising it by 50%. It's kind of good. So it goes from a 20 round magazine to a 28 round magazine, which is, it helps. But I will say guys, watching the gameplay here, just just take, just trust me on this. You guys come to me for these kind of tips occasionally, and I want to tell you guys fast mags on the Elkar 9 is ridiculously good. It reloads so quick. I mean, you're reloading constantly with this thing anyway, because again, 20 round magazine, so you're going to want to go ahead and use these attachments, and you're really going to have some fun. So I'm specifically aiming for the head sometimes. Like, I don't always aim for the head. That's the thing. It takes me so long to complete challenges as compared to other people because, like, I'll play and it's like, well, I'm aiming for the head when it's convenient, but for the most part, I just aim for center mass and trying to get the kill and whatnot. But if you're trying to get headshots on a pistol, I mean, high caliber obviously is going to be fantastic and it's actually going to just increase the overall effectiveness of the weapon. Like, even once I get dark matter and maybe I want to continue running around with the Elkar 9 for whatever reason, I'm definitely going to continue to use high caliber. Like, I'm not only using high caliber because I'm trying to get headshots right now, I'm using high caliber because it just makes all of the pistols better, right? I'm talking every single one of them. The RK5, the MR6, as well as the LKR9. All of them benefit greatly, in my opinion anyway, with high caliber. I definitely see a vast improvement in the quality of my gameplay when I'm actually using high caliber because I seem to kill people a lot faster if I could just get one or two shots in their head. Like, it just it seems to make the weapons that much more effective. Now, if you're using this just as, like, a secondary, like you're a sniper, for example, or you're somebody that is just looking for a decent secondary to run on their classes, I don't recommend using high caliber and fast mags, right? There's no reason whatsoever to allocate that many points in your pick 10 to trying to make your pistol that much better because, let's face it, if it's your secondary, you're not going to be using it that much but if you're using it as a primary like i am using it as kind of like a pseudo smg definitely guys i'm telling you high caliber fast bags and probably the most essential part of this scavenger if you want to run this thing as an actual primary like i've been doing here in this video scavenger i'm telling you guys you need to run it it'll make the weapon actually have some ammo for a change and make it so you can continue to try and get some kills and whatnot otherwise you're gonna find yourself out of bullets after killing maybe two or three people and then you're like well that was fun and then you have to like go pick up another gun which really kind of defeats the whole purpose of trying to use the Elkar 9 
nine as a primary. So definitely, guys, scavenger. If you're looking for my entire class, which some people ask me, like, what classes I like to run, this is it. It's nothing really fancy. It's just uh, basically my same kit that I typically run, but I threw on scavenger on there as well because scavenger is amazing when using a pistol. I'm telling you guys, you got to run it. The final thing I want to talk about here in this video is going to be the idea of party modes. Now, for whatever reason, I actually got a couple of requests today. Like, talk about party modes. Like, well, we want these to come to the game and whatnot. And I went looking. I'm like, was there, like, some sort of leak or people talking about this? I haven't found anything official from Treyarch or Vonderhaar or anybody talking about the idea of party modes. But why haven't we at this point? I think I made a video a while back talking about party modes in Black Ops 3. The only one we have so far is Gun Game. Why don't we have the rest of them? I really have no idea. I have a couple of theories. Number one, maybe... They're delaying the idea of adding in more party modes. I'm talking like sharpshooter, anti up, stuff like that, right? Into the game. Because perhaps maybe they're trying to work on some sort of wager match mode. And maybe they're trying to get everything, all their ducks in a row with that. Make sure it's all working and all balanced and whatnot. Maybe that's something they're working on. I can't say. I'm just I'm speculating here. Don't take this as fact. Don't take it as gospel. I'm just, just speculating here, guys. But the other idea I have is perhaps not as many people enjoyed those game modes as we thought. Now, it sounds weird, right? I enjoyed party modes. A lot of people in the comments about me here do you guys enjoy party modes do you guys enjoy like for me personally sharpshooter was my favorite gun game which is already in the game then you have like other ones like uh sticks and stones one in the chamber and the up like there's a bunch of party modes that have been added to call of duty over the years maybe people didn't play them as much as we thought in my head like in my memory i feel as though a lot of people played those game modes right but David Vonderhaar on Twitter, he's always talking about the internal numbers that they have. Like, he'll sometimes reply to people's tweets, and they say, Oh, this weapon's OP. You need to nerf this particular weapon, you know. And he'll come back at them with stats like, Well, it turns out, you know, this weapon's not ridiculously overpowered. It looks to be ridiculously overused. But in terms of, like, overall kill-death ratio with the weapon, like, it's very average. Like, this is a gun that, you know, people don't typically do that well with. He uses it a lot. You know, he, he comes at, the, at it with, like, these internal numbers that we can't see, that we don't know. It'd be fun if they made them public. But uh, we don't know these numbers, right? So if that's the case with weapons, perhaps they're talking about the same idea with game modes. He was talking a while back about um, why we even have hardcore in the game, which I think I mentioned that when he when he tweeted about it. So he's like, why do we even have hardcore in the game? Because you have to wonder, if you ignore like 10 years worth of tradition in Call of Duty where hardcore has been a thing, you have to wonder like how sane it is to actually keep it in the game with so few people actually playing the hardcore game mode. And to me, it's like, because they're your fans. Like they, they've been fans for years. And if they want to play, hardcore you should keep hardcore in the game it's not as if call of Duty is some struggling indie game where they can't afford to run a couple of extra servers to host some hardcore lobbies right and the same thing is true of party modes in my opinion i mean treyarch if you're going to continue to put things behind supply drops we just talked about in this video that potentially the 10th specialist blackjack is going to be coming to the game via supply drops you already have a bunch of really cool weapons locked behind supply drops as well which you guys are making money hand over fist on these things the least you could do to buy some consumer goodwill is add in some fun stuff for us to do while we wait to try and get some of your supply drop RNG weapons and specialists, right? Just make it so there's more hardcore game modes. I mean, there's a very limited number right now. You could add in a couple of more. It wouldn't be that bad. Even if only a couple thousand people play it, still, that's a couple thousand people that you're making happy because they love your game and they want to play a specific mode in a specific way. And going into the idea of party modes, I mean, there's a lot of people out there, myself included, that would like to play sharpshooter. One in the chamber. I was never a big fan of but one in the chamber right sticks and stones any up the rest of them you know there's a lot of really cool party game modes out there that you guys could just add to the game very easily <laughs> i will say very very easily but it's gonna cost you a little bit extra to run the servers to actually host those lobbies but you know i think you guys make enough money i mean i don't want to be that guy because it, it, it's never really my place to say what people should do with their money or what companies should do with their money but i'm telling you guys i mean they're making so much money with supply drops it's like you can at least add in some party modes you know if you're going to continue to put content behind supply drops which who knows we'll be able to stop that a lot of people are participating in the quote-unquote black market blackout where you know, people are agreeing to not purchase the uh, cod points to you know buy supply drops in and I, myself included i agreed to do it as well you know i'm not going to even if blackjack turns out to be real and actually does come out via supply drops i'm not going to purchase supply drops with money i'm going to just uh spend what crypto keys i have and hopefully i get it but i don't i don't I don't expect videos of it because i can't guarantee i'm going to get it or anything like that so hopefully we can influence some change there but if we can't actually if they don't end up actually ever changing the system at the least they can do is add in some of this extra fun stuff you know they have all this extra money lying around you know as a result of these supply drops they should put that money back into the game right you think that they would do that instead of just putting that money in their pockets which is what it seems like they're doing right now they should, you know, cycle that money back into the game to make it better. If you're going to continue to make money, 
It's like, well, back in the game, make it more fun, add more game modes, add more stuff. And they, I mean, they're adding way more weapons and stuff via supply drops, but that's not really helping anybody. Add in more game modes, add in more stuff for us to do. And uh, I think you definitely buy a lot of consumer goodwill that way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude my video. Well, a little bit longer than I thought it would, but I kind of like this whole format of like, you know, several topics in one video, you know, that kind of a thing. I thought it was fun. And hopefully you guys will enjoy the video as well. And if you did, drop me a rating. Let me know you liked it by leaving a like on the video. And of course, I would love to hear your thoughts on the idea of Blackjack potentially coming to the game via supply drops. What are your thoughts on the Elkar 9 as a whole? Because I've been having a lot of fun with this thing lately. As well as the prospect of party game modes coming to Black Ops 3. I would love to know about that. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop me a rating. Love you guys all. Have a wonderful day.